Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takesh. Today we're gonna to talk about the importance of staging a house or condo before selling or renting. Why don't you take a look at this apartment prior to it being staged? So follow me and let's take a look at what actually happened. So what was the dilemma? The dilemma was that this apartment sat empty for about a month, month and a half. Now that might not seem very long, but for Los Angeles, that is eternity, especially in a hot rentals market. So I was brought in to solve this dilemma. We were given maybe a 24 hour notice to stage this entire condo and to do it beautifully and quickly. The reason, the owner just does not want to keep paying for a condo that sits empty. With property taxes and mortgage bills that are due daily, it is important to take care of this quickly. Most people are trepidatious about actually furnishing a place, thinking that it might not be worth their investment. I'm going to tell you that it's definitely worth that investment to get your apartment or house rented. The reason being that people certainly cannot imagine living in an empty space. And the fact is that in this apartment, we staged it after it sat empty for about 30 to 45 days, as mentioned earlier. The same weekend that we staged it, we had three offers. So why bother staging? What you wanna do is that you wanna show the new potential buyer or the new potential renter how they are going to live in that space. You wanna create quaint areas, areas that they can envision themselves watching TV, lying back, having dinner parties, and without furniture in an apartment, it is actually impossible to really envision how one could live. It's very important how you position the furniture. It might seem like a little thing, but it makes a difference between night and day. Whenever you are setting up a living room or a den or sort of a cozy space, what you wanna do is you wanna keep your couch away from the wall. The tendency is to make the space look bigger and so everybody pushes their couches against the wall. That is the first no-no in interior design. Do not lean your couch against the wall. You wanna create an area in the center of a room. Bring things together. Also, create vignettes. Don't just put a couch and a coffee table. Put two chairs either in front if you have space, if not to the right or to the left. Another great and inexpensive way to do it is to put benches. You could put small stools or benches to the right and to the left of the coffee table. Again, the big takeaway from this is to not push your items against the walls. Bring them in because you do not want an apartment looking stage. Another very important aspect in design is when you place your table under the chandelier. Seems very normal, does it not? Very simple. Not that simple. Most people hang their chandeliers way up high, and I've seen this done in multi-million dollar homes, so this is a very common mistake that's done. Chandeliers above any table need to be at a lower height. Why? Because when you're sitting down and eating dinner, you want that ambient light to be close to you. You wanna be able to visually see the chandelier and you wanna be able to have a cozy dinner. So when staging, make sure that if you have the budget, put up a chandelier to center your table to really identify where the eating area is going to be. The homeowner plans on keeping this condo forever, basically, wants to rent it out, eventually have it as rental income. So the key to keeping this apartment rented year and year again, time and time again, is to really have good materials, but they don't have to be extremely high-end because it is a rental. A nice little touch in the powder room is to add flowers. Go ahead and put a little vase with your favorite flower and why not add artwork? You don't actually have to hang the artwork, you can lean it so that you're not puncturing the walls and it's ready for your new tenant. When staging a master bedroom, what you wanna do is make it feel cozy, luxurious and inviting. And you also want to make sure and keep in mind that the client might not necessarily like color, which is why in all my stagings, what I like to do is use white linens. Another critical thing to do when staging your house for rent or for sale is to create sitting nooks. Why? Because it gives the illusion of space. It gives the ability of the renter, the buyer to envision themselves sitting, reading a book, and really having that aspirational vibe that you want to create so they rent your place right away. 
Don't forget, if you've got wonderful elements in a house, to make sure that you bring them to light. This condo has really gorgeous railing. It also has these wonderful shutters that were built in. Leave the windows open, create that sense of air or that sense of uh, design by really highlighting the important and the positive aspects of the particular house or condo you are staging. This condo had a really nice master bath, so we didn't really have to do much. But what we did want to do is highlight the importance of what it is to escape when you come into your master bath. So we did that with a few really good tips. Buy some white towels from your local store, they're not expensive, and stack them. Put a little objet perhaps on the towels, and a plant is always a good thing. It brings life into the home, and it makes it seem so much more luxurious. It's important to create an ambiance when you're staging so that people can envision what it would be like to get away, perhaps in their sanctuary of their master bath, to take it easy. Don't forget the secondary rooms because some of the decision makers could be the people living in those rooms. In this guest room, we wanted to put a desk. Most likely, if you have teenagers, you're gonna need a place to study, so it's nice to sort of create that space. Also, again, it gives you the illusion of having a bigger room when you have certain areas that are dedicated to different tasks. The bed, again, we used white, clean, crisp linens. I always like to put some pillows in the back to give it a little bit more of that designer touch. And something that's really important that you have noticed probably in every one of these rooms is the fact that we have a chandelier in every room. People love chandeliers. They're not expensive. You can find great ones locally, and it really creates a sense of grandeur, it creates a sense of design, it gives really that upper echelon feel and vibe to any space. It's critical to put up artwork for many reasons. One, it gives your eye a place to sort of center and look at the space. It gives sort of a visual um, understanding of the height of the ceilings and it really is an important designer touch. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I think we paid $9 for each of these canvas arts and we leaned them nicely against the marble fireplace. This is an inexpensive thing to do and don't be afraid to actually buy art. Usually we buy contemporary art because we don't want to bring anything that's too sentimental, things that are maybe abstract and we love putting them on the walls. People really, really find that when walls are white, they look very sterile, but when you put color in a room with art, it makes a very big design statement. Why is it important to have decorative pieces in the house? Well, it gives it the final finishing touches. We talked about lighting, we talked about art, we talked about positioning of furniture, but we really haven't talked about decor. Finding decorative objects these days is actually pretty easy. Just go to your local store and find some things that have a little bit of pizzazz. In this case, I wanna always make sure that if I have something that is high, that I wanna pair it with something that is low. That is a basic principle of design so that you're able to balance a multi-level aesthetic. And this Sputnik, of course, balances itself with this low tray. So again, don't be afraid, buy those decorative items that you love, get candles, get little, uh, potpourri scented items, get little topiaries, and trickle them throughout the house to give it that final designer touch. The final takeaway from all of this is to make sure in creating a space that it is very neutral. You want it to have colors that are not offensive, colors that aren't bright. Earth tones are always a good way to go. White walls are a huge trend right now, so that's easy to do. And just bring, if you can, a little bit of splash of color and decorative pillows, but never on big pieces. Keep it simple, keep it clean, and you'll find that your place will rent or sell within a matter of days. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Red Elevator. Make sure and subscribe below and sound off on what kind of content you are most interested in. Again, it was great seeing you and we'll see you next time.